So we're here today on a nice Monday afternoon in Midtown Manhattan. The only reason on earth I'd be here is to talk to Mike Judge. Uh, we're outside a really fancy hotel and we're going to go up to his hotel suite and quiz him about Beavis and Butthead, uh, the new season of which premieres very soon, uh, and all the other great stuff he's done. <clears throat> Let me... Uh, oh, sorry. Can I, can I go just dump this out and get in? Yeah. It's okay to drink coffee during the interview? Well, hello, Mike Judge. Hello. Um, I'm kind of a little weirded out meeting you because uh, I think, as I'm sure people... Because I'm weird. Well, that's, but that's good. I, I like that part. It weirds me out because um, I think you informed most of my humor. Like, when I was a kid, I told my dad, I was like, oh yeah, I'm interviewing Mike Judge. And he's like, well, you should be pretty good at that because you're, you're fucking Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> basically incarnate. So um, I don't... Yeah, I guess, yeah. Wait, how old are you? I'm 29. Yeah, so. that's about, you're in the... Yeah. I've been getting that a lot lately of people saying either, you know, I grew up on your stuff or I grew up being told not to watch it or mm -hmm. whatever version of that, yeah. I saw the first episode of the new series um, and, you know, while, while things all seem the same on the surface, it was interesting to see how um, some, some of the same observations and commentary applied to this new generation and pop culture now. When I did the show, I was already old. I was obviously older than the characters. Mm -hmm. And even at the time, people would say, like I remember some, some people at MTV saying, you know, that you got, they got ACDC and Metallica. Even at that time in 92, that was kind of an old reference. That was mm -hmm. like, you know, they were like, why, maybe it should be Nirvana and Pearl Jam or something, you know. And, um, so it was already kind of unhip to begin with. Yeah, so I don't know, to me it's, it's more like a state of mind than a, than a, uh, cultural reference, except now I'm watching Jersey Shore and 16 and <laughs> Pregnant, and, <laughs> and what would they say about that? <laughs> and is there, is, there, like, is there something you had in your mind that, oh, maybe one day we'll bring them back, or did MTV approach you, or how, how did that all go down? Uh, well, this, yeah, it started with MTV approaching me, and it, they, they would, um, they'd bring it up every year or two, <laughs> but this, this kind of came as a full court press, like, would you want to do, bring mm -hmm. the show back, uh, and came at a time when I was, you know, King of the Hills done. I'd just done a live action movie and I didn't want to do that again anytime soon. And so I was, um, I had written down ideas for a sequel and just ideas in general over the years. And I always felt like I wasn't quite done with it. I wouldn't have thought 14 years later I'd start doing it again, but uh, it feels right for some reason, I don't know. It seems like the most, well, I think it's true, the most popular and long-running programs on television are animated programs. Yeah. Um, and you started with Liquid Television, which when I was a kid, again, that was another thing that was like, what is this crazy shit? But this Beavis and Butthead came, like, did you, did you have the whole idea for, oh, this could be a show? Or did you just want a well, segment on, on Liquid TV? I think at some point, I mean, I was just making these homemade cartoons, mm -hmm. and I was, I was thinking, like, oh, this could maybe be characters someone would want to take to another level and do something. So right when I had started doing this and got filmed back from the labs and like, wow, I can really make a cartoon, suddenly I see the show that just comes on, Liquid Television. I'm like, mm -hmm. you've got to be kidding. This is too good to be true. What if, wouldn't it be awesome if I could get something on there? And to me, like my, it was just an incredible dream come true to have Liquid Television run four of my shorts, you know. Yeah. Even with Liquid Television, maybe I'm remembering things incorrectly, but I just feel like, with The Simpsons, with that, there was a lot of controversy surrounding this, like, oh my God, people are making, and it's not like our crumb adult cartoons, it's like they're making cartoons that, and animations that can be taken totally on their own merit um, as like good stories, you know, and yeah. funny. Yeah, animation, like, you know, I was, because I came not too long after The Simpsons had started, but it, people just had it in their head that a cartoon is for kids, but, um, yeah, it was right around that time, end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, was this uh, thing happening of just, you know, cartoons, animation. The idea that there was a cartoon that with good stories and funny and great characters and, and relevant was just, you know, kind of mind-boggling. I've read some things you said that, you know, if um, some interviews leading up to the premiere, um, which is in a very soon, that, you know, if things became too racy for them this time, then you'd just put them online or something like that, which I'm really happy to hear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in, in, yeah. Any occasions of that so far? You know, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. There was something where it was, 
one of these shows, like 16 and Pregnant or something, we had them talking on, and they were like, well, the producers of that show are unhappy with this or that, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm unhappy with you telling me I can't put it on in there, <laughs> and I'm a producer of this show, so I'm gonna do what we'll I just put it on YouTube. <clears throat> well, can, can Beavis say fire now? Is that okay? Yes, Beavis can say fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important yeah. to me. Um, I said a lot of things on fire because of Beavis. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, um, <clears throat> I don't want to ask you just about Beavis and Butthead because as much as you love them, I'm sure you need a little break. Uh, you have uh, a degree in physics. Yeah, believe it or not. Does that ever come in handy? <laughs> uh, there was, you know, there was a time when... Um, it was after a test screening of Office Space when uh, one of the Fox executives was trying to make a point about the statistics, you know, from, and you know, when you oh, do I physics, see. you learn thermodynamics, you learn statistics inside and out or pretty, pretty well. So like I, I was able to just go, no, that's not what that number means. It's this and this and this and like <laughs> lectured them all on statistics and <laughs> off, after a office space screening which didn't get a very high number. It was a test screening? Yeah, yeah, test screening, yeah. So, But it was some kind of data that he was trying to use to say that I should get rid of the gangster rap. I, I, they were fighting so hard to get me to take that out, and I, I went out on a limb and said, hey, okay, if, let's, let's specifically ask a focus group at this next screening hmm. if, you, if you like it, and if, if, if they don't like it, I'll take it out, is what I said, which um, it was great because the, the woman was trying so hard to just pollute the thing like she goes what do you think about the music <laughs> and and they, uh, and they said oh it was great it was great okay maybe. but what about the gangster rap <laughs> and then there's oh man it was great okay but, but maybe there was too much of it like doing that, that and they would not give her anything and uh, and it was it was it was great because it was there was not one bit of negativity that came up with this this focus group saved saved me <clears throat> well I think um, that story a lot of people you know a lot of people know your work obviously a lot of people know your movies but it's for whatever reason it's always I think a lot of people this is why they admire you as a person is you know it's always been like somebody saying no you can't do that and, and do you feel that sometimes do you feel like I don't want to say it's not an underdog situation but no, oh, it's I'm, always hindsight, it seems like, with yeah, the other stuff. You know? I know. I mean, I'd, probably, I'd feel better if it was a huge hit out of the gate. But, uh, but you know, I mean, I, I grew up watching all this, you know, lots of TV and, and not, not as much movies until later in life. But, like, you just, you know, I, I always would feel like entertainment people in New York or L.A. And, and I always get, getting this feeling that they're just slightly out of touch with the way most of us mm -hmm. think and feel and, and just kind of, and when you do, when something does happen that's like you can relate to or, or is, especially stuff that's about everyday life, you kind of just really appreciate it. So, I mean, that's probably why I gravitate towards stuff like, that's like King of the Hill or Office Space, mm -hmm. that's, that's more kind of everyday normal people. But uh, yeah, I guess my stuff does, well, the movies have a delayed reaction thing going. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's certain reasons too, like with Idiocracy. That, um, but Idiocracy, though, I mean, that was like really ditching a movie. I mean, they. Yeah. I, don't, I think it was like maybe sense. 11 theaters they put it in. We locked, finished the movie, put it in the can, and it was over a year after mm -hmm. that that it came out. So I, by the time they got around to marketing, I was completely out of touch with mm -hmm. them. I, I, get, I get a couple calls. And then I, I, what I think, you know, they looked at it and they said, okay. Let's look at office space as the business model. It, it made us a ton of money, but it was like three or four years later. Mm -hmm. And so let's look at that as a business model. Well, what would, w did we do wrong there? We spent money on a release and trailers. Let's not do that this time. Okay, one last but very important question. Um, I've had a debate, long-standing debate, with one of my friends about the definition of chode. Because um, some people oh, I think believe I can it's a taint. That, but let me see. What are the? <laughs> some people believe it's a taint. Some people believe it's a. Oh, what it is? Um, you, well, some people, you know, dick. That's that's fatter than it is long. And oh well, okay. I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. What I heard is it it, it just means penis. Yeah, the, uh, but that it's short for chorizo. It came out of you know the Chur vatos saying that, like chode, ch short for ch which with sausage. Sausage. Yeah. So in Spanish. So. 
that's that's how I heard it growing up as a chode, like you know. Teresa. The the cholos were yeah, chode.